This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. When Pope John Paul II visited Chicago in 1969 and 76, he was an obscure cardinal, little known outside the Polish community. Today, an estimated one and a half million persons gathered to hear him celebrate Mass in Grant Park. Millions lined the streets to watch his motorcade in the nation's largest Roman Catholic diocese. The crowds were unprecedented. Not so the Pope's restated position opposing artificial birth control and abortion. He implied endorsement of the church's right to lobby actively for anti-abortion laws. Bert Quint reports. John Paul met in prayer this morning with more than 300 bishops, representing most of the hierarchy of an American church in the process of change, filled with dissent and division, struggling to meet the demands of American Catholics while maintaining the established doctrine. After the prayer came a speech by the pontiff at a session closed to newsmen. At the closed meeting, according to a text of his speech released by Vatican officials, John Paul quoted from a pastoral letter written by the bishops three years ago. He recalled statements on these themes from that letter and said he agreed with them. On the subject of birth control, John Paul told the bishops, you rightly spoke out against both the ideology of contraception and contraceptive acts. The Pope went on to say that sexual intercourse outside of marriage is wrong. On the subject of divorce, John Paul said, you rightly stated the covenant between a man and a woman joined in Christian marriage is indissoluble and irrevocable. On the subject of abortion, John Paul told the bishops, you clearly said the right to life must be recognized and fully protected by the law. On the subject of euthanasia, the pontiff said, you clearly spoke up for the aged, asserting mercy killing is a grave moral evil. And finally, on homosexuality, the Pope said, you stated homosexual activity as distinguished from homosexual orientation is morally wrong. To be homosexual by nature, the pontiff said, is not immoral. To engage in homosexual acts is. After the speech, some bishops said they thought people in their diocese would welcome the Pope's remarks. Others feared that his hard line on such issues as the ban on birth control, a ban ignored by an estimated eight of every ten American Catholics might further divide the church. He is carrying out the traditional line. How do you think that will be accepted in Toledo? It's going to be a problem like it will be any place else because, as, a, as I, I mentioned before, we're in a permissive society and, and, they, and they want the freedoms but none of the restraints and the responsibilities that go with the freedoms. Maybe in the short run there will be reaction, but I think my own belief is, and I think it's the faith of the church, that the more lovingly, clearly, we proclaim our understanding of the gospel, then in the long run, the more loving we are to the people. One bishop, who asked not to be quoted by name, said he was disappointed because, he said, John Paul gave simple answers to issues that are not that simple. The Pope doesn't understand, he said, how many loyal Catholics in the United States feel about these things. Bert Quint, CBS News, Chicago. The largest crowd of his American journey turned out for the Pope in Chicago, but even as he spoke, there were voices of opposition. Dissenting Catholic scholars said that in spite of papal opposition to birth control, for instance, Catholics may dissent, quote, in theory and in practice, unquote, and still remain good Catholics. And in Los Angeles, a speaker at a National Organization for Women meeting predicted the church would lose members because of the Pope's traditional stand. Miriam Vier reports. At the now convention in Los Angeles, the Pope's stern message drew a sharp, if predictable, response. The pontiff's condemnation of birth control, now leaders claim, ignores what is already a reality among American Catholics. We have been told that we are sinful and in conflict with our church. We do not believe that. We believe that we are in the spirit of the Christian tradition and that limiting our families is a holy and good thing to do and a responsible thing to do and that the celibate clergy are further and further from our realities. Now rejects just as strongly the Pope's no, agreement with other Catholic clergy that abortion no. is an unspeakable crime. There are a number of Catholic women, multitudes of Catholic women, who have seen fit to choose abortion. We're not at all surprised. I think the thing it is doing is bringing home to women the fact that the church and the pope does not value women. The Los Angeles head of dignity, a gay Catholic organization, said he wasn't surprised by the pope's reaffirmation of the traditional church stance against homosexuality, uh, that, that it may even suggest some new understanding. This is the first time in history that a pope has publicly stated that there is a clear distinction between the condition of homosexuality 
and acts of homosexuality. So I think it's very worthwhile what the Pope said, and I don't think that it's going to make any change at the present time. Many now members believe the Pope has had to assert strong positions against homosexuality, abortion, and birth control because he senses more liberal American Catholic attitudes on those issues. As its first act of business today, NOW's board of directors passed a resolution aimed at John Paul II, saying, sexism is a sin. Repent. Miriam Bier, CBS News, Los Angeles. After all these years, I still like working out. But what I really like is the beer that's waiting for me when it's over. And if you work out the way we do, there better be a lot of beer waiting. That's why we drink light beer from Miller. Light has one-third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling, and it tastes great. Take it from a guy who works out a lot. Could really use one right now. There you go, Bruce. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Safeco is a company that specializes in insuring responsible homeowners. Careful, dependable types. But if careless neighbors are going out on a limb and you're paying for it, pray to your nearest independent Safeco agent. At Safeco, we think careful people deserve to save. After all, it's the people we don't insure that make Safeco such a good deal for those who do. Men and women wept with joy today as the Pope toured Chicago, home to more persons of Polish descent than any other city outside Poland. But as Bill Plant reports, his appeal was ecumenical, calling for tolerance among all people. Everywhere in Chicago, John Paul II was met with loving enthusiasm, and everywhere he returned it. These people had waited through the misty pre-dawn chill for him to emerge from the Cardinal's residence. The papal motorcade was deliberately routed through some of the city's poorer neighborhoods. This stop was at a church built by Lithuanian immigrants, but now serving Hispanic Americans. <laughs> then he went to the Poles, who proudly claim him as their own. Polish people from all over the city were invited to hear John Paul celebrate this mass in their mother tongue. And at the end of his prepared remarks, he reminded the chilled crowd of an old Polish proverb. Those who get up early, he said, will be blessed all day. The route to the bishops' meeting took the Pope through some of the most solidly Eastern European and at times racially tense parts of Chicago. But today, all was joy, beaming faces, signs, and banners. This afternoon, a crowd officially estimated at more than a million gathered in Grant Park on the city's lakefront for the Papal Mass. The message was a plea for harmony and understanding among the people from many nations who have come together in America. Different as you are, you have come to accept each other. At times imperfect, Catholics in America have never seen a pope so friendly and so human as John Paul II. Yet he has made it very clear that he is not about to change traditional church teaching on some of the issues which so deeply divide his American flock. His message was, in the words of one prelate, tough medicine. And that may mean more troubled times ahead for the American church. Bill Plant, CBS News, Chicago. The story of the pope's visit is often told in terms of the millions who gather to see and hear him. But the impact of his journey might best be measured in the story of just one person, and Bob Faw has that story. She had never dared imagine that such a day was even possible. Early this morning, as she prayed again, and later, as she filed through swarming crowds, she still couldn't believe she was here. Far away from her San Diego home, where Lillian Sanyewski Shepherd supports Polish-American groups and worships so faithfully San Diego's Polish-American community gathered enough money to send her to Chicago to see the Polish Pope. The 59-year-old department store cleaning lady had flown here with a prayer, but without a ticket for the papal mass. Learning of her mission, a local bishop provided one. So this morning, in a sea of 20,000 faces, there sat Lillian Sanyewski Shepherd as John Paul II celebrated a mass in Polish. It's just wonderful. 
so he talks so that you can understand him and uh, he talks right to you, doesn't talk above you. <laughs> Her location was so bad she could barely see the Pope and lacking another special invitation, she was rebuffed when she tried to take communion. But for Lillian Shepherd, the moment was holy. Just being here was enough. I think my prayer has been answered, more than answered. I never thought anything would so wonderful would happen to me. If I died right now, I would all oh, be so happy. <laughs> so for just over an hour, the San Diego Pilgrim was with the Pilgrim Pope. What I feel, she said, I cannot put into words. Later, as the pontiff drove away, he did not even look at, much less see her, but by then, he didn't have to. That's all right. <laughs> Okay. I saw him. Bob Fall, CBS News, Chicago. There was surprising economic news from Washington today, and it was good news for a change. The Labor Department reported that the nation's unemployment rate unexpectedly dropped from 6% in August to 5.8% in September. Government economists